Hi there, it's Jessica Boscarini, and I'm the founder and content creator for Healthy Fit Fem Moms, and I'm here to talk to you all about Baby First Foods Day and why rice seal shouldn't be one of them. Click the button or wow face if you're excited about this topic or to learn more. And please leave comments and let me know any questions regarding Baby's First Foods so I can answer them at the end. But before we get into this further, I want to introduce myself so you know why I'm here sharing with you today. Tranquilo Matt invited me here for my expertise in the field of nutrition. I actually met them at the ABC Kids Expo back in October and did a review for their Tranquilo Matt. If you haven't checked it out, it's really cool. Um, and that's for another day. I'm actually also baby planning and motherhood consultant, which is why I was there. And then if you want to check out my website, you can look at the review and then learn more about me as well. But back to the topic of healthy eating, or at least what I thought was healthy eating, started when I was in gymnastics. Unfortunately, my eating ha habits actually became quite unhealthy, and I began getting various health problems because of it. Eventually, I was told I wouldn't be able to have kids if I kept this up, which had always been a dream of mine. So my mindset quickly changed, and healthy, real healthy eating became my priority. Little did I know that um, what I thought was nutrition and eating healthy still wasn't, so I started researching and studying more and eventually became hooked with nutrition. All my friends kept telling me that I should do something with my knowledge about it, and so after graduating business management, I decided to go back to school and get my master's in holistic nutrition. And then from there, I became a certified nutritional chef, and I actually started cooking for people um, and making nutrition my career. And then since then, I've worked as a nutritionist, a personal chef, and even a caterer for multiple families and events. Eventually, I started a blog, and um, it was called OC Food and Fitness at the time because I lived in Orange County, um, but I still always wanted that to somehow go into me wanting to be a mom, so eventually, when I became pregnant with my son, I turned it into Healthy Fit Bad Moms, which is what it is today, and now that son is five, and then I actually also have a two-and-a-half-year-old daughter and am pregnant with number three, so for those who don't know, surprise, I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, I'm actually due in September. And so that's kind of how my whole journey of health and nutrition got started. And then if you want to learn more, you can check me out on Instagram at HealthyFitFatMoms or my website, HealthyFitFatMoms.com, to know more about nutrition and all of that. But why I'm here today is because I want to talk about babies first foods. Oh, and then as a side note, so the fit comes in because I'm also a personal trainer and a Pilates instructor, just in case you were wondering why there's a fit added in there. But now to the juicy stuff, baby's first foods. Um, so you guys ready? Comment and let me know where you're listening from. I'm actually from San Diego, but I've been living in Dallas for almost five years now. I know, crazy transition. <laughs> um, so baby's first foods are always kind of a controversial topic, actually. Um, so many people have varying opinions, and while I am not a medical doctor, I have studied nutrition, the human body, and all about babies and kids. Obviously, I have kids of my own, so I like to think I know what I'm talking about. And of course, babies all grow at different paces, and some will most likely show interest at different times than others. I mean, some even as early as four months, but a baby's digestive system really isn't ready at this time. Um, they, they just can't process the solid foods and it can actually clog up their digestive tracts, and it will, it will also start the weaning process much earlier than you really should when you're giving them milk. And so the rule of thumb is basically around six months. Obvious, obviously, every child is gonna be a little bit different, um, and then if your baby isn't showing interest at this stage, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, you can try again in every three, four days or so, just giving them, giving them a little bit of solids and kind of kind of gauging it from there. Um, when I first started feeding my son, it was homemade purees because, of course, you always see baby food, and you're like, oh, I'm going to make my own. So I thought it would be awesome <laughs> that the day he turned six months if I started that. Well, he ended up hating them. He just would spit them out and kind of, like, fuss and hit at the spoon. And so I did the three-day rule. Like, every couple days, three days, I would give him – little bites here and there, and still he didn't see much, seem to have much interest until I would say, like I would always eat a salad with um, baked sweet potatoes on them, and he just, he kept like pointing and looking super interested, 
so eventually I decided to just tear off a little piece and give him some of that. And that's kind of how my whole baby led weaning thing began is because he loved them. And so I realized that the puree things just didn't work for us, um, which is totally fine. And I'll get more into baby led weaning in a little bit. But um, have any of you guys started solid foods yet? If so, let me know. What was their favorite food? Did they like purees or are they more of like a chunk kind of person? <laughs> um, so back to the purpose of starting solid foods. So I know we talked about um, giving them solids, but it's more – but the purpose of giving an infant solids is often much different than what people think. Of course, a baby is not going to drink milk or formula forever, and gradually they need to start eating solid foods. So we think, okay, around six months we should start introducing them. Well, this is at the record state straight. In some countries, they actually don't start solid until well after a year. And even in the United States, some people feel that this is the best. Um, I'm not necessarily condoning that or saying that's what you need to do, but just so you put it into perspective, and realize that if your baby's not ready the day they turn six months or even seven months, it's totally okay. Um, so the idea of solids is really inter to introduce new foods and textures to kids as opposed to necessarily getting nutrients from it because milk really should be the main nutrient source that they're getting. Um, and then they're also working on their grasping and dexter dexterity reflexes which is why I'm all about baby led weaning again, because that really helps with the picking up little pieces and stuff. Uh, and then the older your child gets, obviously when they start crawling and walking, running around, they're gonna need more food and your milk's not necessarily gonna be enough for them. So they'll want more solid foods and they'll need more nutrients as well. So if your milk can't give it to them, then eating these other nutrient dense foods is really important. So by the time your child's a year, then you can gradually decrease the milk and then have them not necessarily entirely on solids, but closer to it. Um, again, everyone's a little different. Some people give their kids milk well into two. Some want to stop about a year. So it just depends on you and what works best for you and your family. And when I say milk, I refer, I'm referring to either breast milk or formula because, again, you know, we all, we all are different. And so whatever works for you and your family. Now let's start talking about the times of day you should give your kids solids. Many people want to know, is it before or after milk? So um, I would say that when, when we start giving them, a lot of people think that, oh, my baby should be really hungry in order to get the solids. They're not really interested. So if they're hungry and their little bellies are empty, then they're going to want to eat more. Well, since milk should be the primary nutrient that they're getting, this isn't really this this doesn't really make sense in in the fact that you want your kid to have milk and then again, the food are just kind of a supplement too. So I believe that the best way to do it is probably waiting an hour or so after you give them milk. So it allows kind of their milk to digest a bit and then will be able to have some of the food. And then again, if they don't seem hungry or really want the solids, then don't force it. Uh, listen to their cues and then try again the next feeding or even in a day or two. Um, and then by cues, I'm referring to turning their heads, closing their mouth, batting up the spoon, wanting down, spitting out the food, throwing it at you, all that kind of stuff. Those are all cues that your baby just not, either they don't like the food that you're giving them, they're not hungry for their food, um, you just you don't want to force it because this can set them up for really bad eating habits later in life. And you want the whole food experience to be something that's good. You know, that's why we want to give them healthy foods. We want to have an environment where they can actually enjoy themselves. And if they're stressed out about eating and they feel you stressed out about eating, it's not really healthy for them. So now talking about the time, the type of solids that we should start. Because I know this is probably what most of you guys want. Um, so I know in the beginning I said rice cereal should not be one of them. Well, um, I mean, this was the first food given to me back in the day. I don't know about you guys. Maybe that dates me. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I can't tell you how often my mom and even mother-in-law would mention with my kids, or especially my son when he was an infant, um, that if I would put some, just put some rice cereal in his milk, in his bottle before bed when he was three or four months, and it would help him sleep better. 
was like, yeah, no, thank you. Not my thing, but <laughs> thanks for the advice. Um, so um, when a baby is introduced to solids, this helps form their taste buds and likes and dislikes for years to come. Um, not to say they won't change. I mean, you'll notice that someday, like even you, some foods that you didn't like when you were young, now you love and vice versa. Uh, but the same can be said for even breast milk and formula. If you eat a lot of vegetables and you're super healthy while you're nursing and even while you're pregnant, then you'll notice that your baby will automatically gravitate towards these types of foods and tastes. And then on the flip side, if you eat a lot of sweets, and when you're pregnant and then when you're nursing as well, but your baby and then eventually toddler is probably only going to want really sweet type foods as well. Again, not to say that it's totally the case, but a lot of times it is. And it's why it's so important to start off with the most healthy and nutrient-dense vegetables as you can. I mean, I already mentioned that I tried the puree thing and that it didn't work. And then I told you about the sweet potatoes and stuff, but... I also did butternut squash and avocado, all of that to begin with. And it just, it made such a difference in how my son would take to foods and take to solid foods and then other vegetables and stuff as opposed to like sweets and even a lot of the jarred foods. Sometimes you'll see there's added sugar in them. So if you do the puree thing and your kid loves them, then great. I mean, I, again, I wish that my child would. It just didn't work out for us back then. And now, I mean, I really like the baby led weaning things. So I've done that with my daughter and I'll do it with the next one too. But I mean, purees can be easier. So do your, do your kids like purees? And if so, let me know because other moms always want to know, you know, what the best foods for your babies are and, you know, just give them ideas of different things that they can try out. So again, it's, if you're doing the baby led weaning thing, you want the, you want the food to be super soft either way, like small, little, tiny chunks of food. I mean, babies will gum, you'll notice. They're not going to chew. They don't have teeth. And even if, even if they did, it's not like they have a full set so they could really chew. But just giving them little chunks of food that they can kind of gum and then eventually swallow just gets them used to eating. And then you also notice that with a baby led weaning thing, it's a lot about control. I mean, you'll, if you give your child food, and they don't want it is because they're telling you that they want to control what they're eating. It's not your choice. And <laughs> you'll realize if you don't have older kids already, that's all kids want in life is they want control. So, I mean, just let them think that they're getting it and it'll probably work out better for you. So I would say for a generalized rule of thumb though, uh, start with cooked veggies like sweet potatoes and peas or super ripe avocados again. And then maybe you can go into the bananas, pears, and smashed apples things too. Like in that first month, month or so, like, well, first month, I mean like six months when you start feeding them. And then just kind of see how they do. I still prefer the veggie thing, but if you want to try a couple other things just to see how it's going, then by all means, go for it. And then around seven months, I would start adding maybe some cooked squashes, like the acorn squash, butternut squash, even carrots and zucchini. I just make sure it steams, you know, um, tiny little chunks again. And then if you feel extra adventurous, you can try some oatmeal, even quinoa flakes. There's a lot of protein and fiber in those as a pair, as opposed to rice cereal, which is again why I don't like rice cereal because it basically have drained all the nutrients out of it. And if you are starting solids, and even though they're still getting the nutrients from milk, they, they really do need to get some kind of nutrients and just the taste of it from those healthy foods that you're giving them. So then if you want to add in some fruits, um, you can try some as well. Um, but in the long run, you'll, you'll notice that fruits are generally, I mean, for 99% of kids are much easier um, for your kid to enjoy since they're sweet. And then vegetables often are bitter, just... You know, they're not, I mean, even adults, not every adult likes vegetables. So it's more of an acquired taste. So if that's what you start off with and that's all your kid knows, then it's easier for them to go with the vegetables and then eventually like the fruit and stuff too. So then I would say around eight or nine months, go with the broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, those type of foods. Just make sure if you do do spinach to cut it up really fine because a lot of times it can be stringy and obviously you don't want your kid to choke on it. And then you can go with even some hard-cooked egg yolks, some 
like some brown rice, some noodles, all of that kind of stuff. Start adding a little bit of grains and again, the healthier grains um, with more nutrients. And um, you want to make sure there's a lot of fiber and stuff. Um, and since you are moving into foods here that may cause allergic reactions, try introducing them like every three to four days or so. And you want to watch carefully for signs of allergies or intolerances before moving to another. Um, oh, and that brings me to nut butters. So the rule of thumb used to be a long time ago that not to give your kid anything that could cause a food allergy until they're over a year old because if they do have a food allergy, it will affect them. Well, that's no longer the case. They actually realize that the longer you hold off on giving kids these foods, the more likely they are to have a food allergy to them to build that up. So you do want to start introducing some of these type foods that when they're younger, like stuff like nuts, eggs, shellfish, um, again, nuts, all that kind of stuff. Oh, I already said nuts. <laughs> well, nuts again. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest one, peanuts and then tree nuts as well. Um, for me, I gave my kids sun butter. They absolutely loved it. And that's not something that kids generally have an allergy to at all. So it, it gives you that kind of the smooth texture. I mean, I would literally give them days out of the jar, just little spoonfuls and stuff. And then coconut oil, too. And I actually still do <laughs> now that we're talking about it. But it's just it's a really easy food to give them. And they generally like it. So do your kids like nut butters or do they have allergies? It's really great for protein, healthy fats, all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm saying. If they do have allergies or you're just, you're, you're kind of hesitant about giving them stuff, some butter is a great alternative. Um, but I would say the one food that you definitely don't want to give your baby until after a year is honey. Honey contains botulism spores, which a young baby can't fight off. It's one of the few things. It really can be deadly if you're not careful. So um, definitely don't give them that till after a year. And then personally, I avoid dairy. Um, I mean, I don't do it myself. So many people have dairy intolerances anyway, especially really young children. And it's really hard to digest. And a lot of times parents don't realize that that's the issue. So I would say avoid that till after a year as well. Um, some people do like to try earlier, but I would say in general, you should avoid dairy um, for quite some time. Uh, and then if you're a meat eater, I'm personally not. My husband is. Um, so I didn't really give meat to my kids till, I don't know, maybe like 15, 18 months or so. Um, but if you do eat meat and you want your kids to eat it, then by all means, I would say like nine or 10 months is great. Just start with chicken or like a white fish, you know, something very mild. And just, again, make it really flaky, really simple to eat, little pieces. Um, other meats can be really hard to digest, even for adults. And so I would wait longer to do the red meat thing or, you know, stuff that's a little tougher. And then if you're into tofu, it's a good substitute here, too. There's a lot of protein in it. Uh, lentils, white beans, those are all great. Um, have you guys tried lentils for your kids? I actually, my kids love lentils. I would say that was probably one of their favorite foods when they were young. And so I definitely recommend trying lentils because they can take on the taste of anything. And yeah, if there's any other favorite foods that you guys want to add to the list, let me know because I mean, they're, you know, again, other parents and moms would definitely be interested because it's always nice to have more ideas. I mean, I feel like <laughs> as a parent, you can never have enough help and ideas for different stuff. So, Oh, talking about lentils and stuff. So this brings me to the next point about seasonings. So don't be afraid of seasonings. Um, my kids actually really like spicy food, probably because I ate loads of Thai food when, when I was pregnant with them, and I love spicy. Um, so that definitely helped give them that taste. But even, I mean, you can add it straight to their food. I would say stuff like ginger, cinnamon, rosemary, garlic, all those kind of um Seasonings really do give the food like a nice taste. I mean, if you think about it, having plain oatmeal or plain chicken isn't necessarily the best thing. Avoid salt. Babies don't need salt. Um, but other kind of seasonings, you know, like the aromatic type and even just a little bit. This will actually help them as they get older and make them more likely to enjoy a wide array of foods and more willing to try stuff. If you feed kids super plain foods, the older they get, 
they're not going to be used to the different tastes and spices, and they probably won't enjoy them or even be willing to try them just because it's not something they're used to. So it's like the same with us. I mean, if we never grew up eating Indian food, and then all of a sudden we go somewhere and we're given curry and we hate it, it's probably because you never had anything like that before, and it's just it's very overwhelming. So if you gradually introduce the different seasonings and tastes to kids, they're a lot more likely to eat it. And then back to the bean subject, uh, you can also do black beans, kidney beans, edamame, all around, I mean, anywhere between 9 and 11 months. It kind of just depends on your kid and how they're taking to the other things. Obviously, beans can cause gas, so just be aware of this and give them a little bit at a time. I mean, you don't want to give them, you know, beans every day for every meal, but just little bits here and there are a great way to start. I mean... Again, we're just introducing the foods to kids. We're not really trying to have them get all the nutrients and stuff out of it until they get a little bit older. So, and then also talking about grains, this is a good place to add in some more grains, uh, but just be careful. I mean, a lot of kids have gluten intolerances and allergies. Um, mine did and do. Uh, my son is actually worse than my daughter. He's a lot more sensitive. But by gluten, I'm talking about wheat, barley, rye, or even foods that are processed, like some oatmeals, you know, it'll say processed with. So you just need to be aware of that and just keep a close eye on them. Again, introducing foods every three or four days and just realizing, like, if they break out in a rash or their stomach hurts, they're super fussy, they can't sleep. You know, these are all signs that something's bothering them. And so food is often where you want to turn for that. So... And then by the time your kid's a year, you can feel free to give them pretty much everything as long as the texture and the hardness is okay. I mean, it depends how many teeth that your child has at this point and then their dexterity, you know, their swallowing mechanisms and all of that. I mean, most kids actually will do much better than you think that they will, but just be aware. You know, you never want to leave food with your kid alone, especially when they're learning to eat. You always want to keep a close eye on them. And then you can give them some water, too. I mean, they're still drinking the milk, but just water to help them um, like flush things down a little bit is really good, too. So, and then one of the biggest points about eating solids, I know it can be messy, and so a lot of parents don't want to deal with that, especially when they're out and, you know, when they have a busy day. It's just it's so much easier to give them a squeeze pouch or something like that. But really let them mess around with their food. Um, let them smell and appreciate the colors and the textures. And this is where they start to actually enjoy their food. So it, it just allows them to, again, have that control, which they really like. And then to just feel like that they can try more things and that they want to be more adventurous. And so one of my secrets for this was I always were, I always ditched the bib altogether and just would dress my kids down to their diapers. Um, I know, like, the first time people would see me, they're like, what are you doing? And let me say, I only did this in my house or, like, close friends' homes and stuff. But it was just, it's so much easier to have them just in a diaper and just eat and get really messy and just be able to wipe them down with a washcloth or paper towel as opposed to doing, like, mountains and mountains of laundry every day and then having every clothes every piece of clothing with stains on it. So that's just my little tip for you. I mean, there are some nice bibs out there, but still, I think that's the easiest. So if your child's still not showing much, much interest, I mean, you've tried all the different stuff, then give it a break. I mean, maybe they're just not that into it, you know? Um, obviously, as they get closer to a year, it's important that they do try different foods, and they are eating different stuff. But if this isn't the case, then as long as they're getting the nutrients through milk and they're still growing and thriving in that area, you don't have to feel stressed about it. I mean, there's enough to stress about as a parent as it is, so just kind of take it easy. So now that we have talked about all the foods to give them, let's talk about how much. So this is the other thing that people always don't know. I know I've said a lot about just kind of letting your kids kind of feel it out and do their own thing, but... Um, again, I just want to reemphasize that it's really a learning process here. Um, let your kid lead the way. You know, listen to their cues. Um, you never want to force feed them or bribe them into eating stuff. Don't, you know, don't say you have to finish this before you get down. I know it's just that was ingrained in us when we were little. I mean, I still find myself, I mean, I do that myself, and then I say it to my kids sometimes, and I have to kind of step back and be like, okay, 
no, you don't, you know, it's our job to give them the right amount of food and not overfeed them. Um, of course, you have to say, okay, if you don't finish your food, then you're not going to have snacks later. But that's as they get older. I mean, when they're little, it's just the learning process. I just want to keep reemphasizing it's a learning process, you know. So I would say a general rule of thumb when you're starting solids, just like a teaspoon here or there is truly all they need. It's just a little bit of taste and, again, the feel of it all. I mean, you can gradually increase this to two to three times a day. And then once they're good with that, then start increasing that to another teaspoon or two at a time. So eventually you'll be giving them maybe a tablespoon two or three times a day when they're little. It's really not that much. Um, and then after they start eating more and more foods, then you want to start introducing multiple foods per like session, you know, per time that they actually sit down and eat. So just again, starting with a teaspoon or two, and then gradually increasing it until you can find what they really, you know, what works for them and how much that they're willing to eat, depending, again, on if they're walking, if they're crawling, if they're running around, if they're getting exercise, if they just kind of hang out all day because they're not walking yet. So all that will vary, and then your kid will eat more or less, depending on the day. And, and kids go through growth spurts. Sometimes they want to eat a ton, just like with milk. Sometimes they want to drink a ton, and then sometimes they don't. So... Just kind of play it day by day and see how it goes. And listen to their cues when they tell you they've had enough and have enough. I mean, you'll see if you push them too far, this is when they start throwing the food and getting really upset. And this is when they'll have bad experiences around food. So we don't want that to happen either. So so yeah, I mean, I always I always just let my kids kind of do their own thing. And I never, I literally never measure a thing. So you, you literally do not have to measure a teaspoon or tablespoon. Just kind of go with it. I mean, I literally, again, never measured a thing. And I probably have two of the healthiest, most well-rounded eaters I know. So, yeah, don't, like, did you get that? Seriously, do not measure. <laughs> it's just, it's a waste of time. So comment or give me a thumbs up if you agree. I mean, I'm just trying to save you guys time. So let me just give you a quick roundup before we go into questions. So I know that starting solids can be a super daunting experience, and we all just want to do what's right for our children. But as long as you're trying to give them the most wholesome, nutritious foods that you can, and you're listening to their cues, then you're doing totally fine. I mean, I promise, Mama, you're good. So just go with your instincts. You know, little bits here and there is great. Um... Yeah, I want you guys to feel I want you guys to feel good about it. So any questions out there? I'm ready for your questions. Let me know. Um, let's go back and see. All right. Well, so I I mean I can answer a few questions if no one has any. Um I would say, hmm, let me think of a question. Okay, let's go with this. How about leftovers? All right, people always want to know, if a baby doesn't finish their food, is it okay to give them leftovers later? It, okay, this depends. Um, a lot of times, I hate wasting food personally, um, but in regards to, especially if something's heated up and your baby's eating the food and you're giving them little spoonfuls of something, so they're getting the germs on the spoon in their mouth, and then you're putting it back in the fridge, there's probably those germs in there, and then those are then going to proliferate, and it's really not good. So in that sense, no, you shouldn't keep the leftovers. But in regards to if you're doing something like baby love weaning and you have – Say, again, sweet potatoes. You broke up a whole bunch of little sweet potatoes. They're eating them or little pieces of peas or broccoli, and they don't finish them, then that's fine. You know, you just don't want to do something where it actually touched their mouth, like a spoon to touch their mouth and then went back into the food. Those leftovers, you don't. Um, and then, I mean, you can reheat stuff, like especially vegetables, I would say. You can reheat like two, maybe three times. Um, but a lot of times you can also do, like, just give them cold leftovers. I mean, I like even for milk, I pretty much nursed um, 100% of the time. Sometimes I would pump into a bottle, but I never would reheat them. I did a couple times with my son, 
and it would just seem like such a pain in the butt and he was always so hungry anyway whenever I was gonna feed him or I gave the bottle to someone else to feed him that they would just have it cold and be totally happy so I would say the same I mean you can try warming food up you can try it cold and that's another thing so let's read this next question if baby doesn't want it if baby doesn't seem to want solids at all or doesn't seem to like anything I'm trying to feed him well beyond the normal age expectations that they should be enjoying solids okay so what if baby doesn't okay got it so if your baby doesn't seem to be liking foods um I would say for the most part don't stress about it it's really okay I mean every kid grows at their own pace you know just like you also have to take into account when your child was actually born so if your baby is a preemie then those first couple weeks or months that they were born ahead of time kind of doesn't count so you want to count them so even if they were born say four weeks early when they when it was their actual due date then they're technically that's when the weeks start. So you don't count those first four weeks at all. So in regards to food, this is often the case. Sometimes baby digestive systems just aren't developed enough. Um, sometimes babies can be having other issues, um, like reflux, re reflux or stomach issues that they don't want the food. Those are also issues that can happen. Um, there's also... I mean, maybe the food that you're feeding them, they just don't like. I mean, they say that it takes about 10 times for anyone, for a baby or an adult, to actually acquire a taste for food. Yes, of course, sometimes you try it the first time and you love it. But then other times you try stuff and you really don't like it. I mean, I used to hate tomatoes when I was young, probably because, um, I don't know, I, the acid really upset my stomach. But anyway, it took me a really long time to actually enjoy eating tomatoes. Like, it started with ketchup and then tomato sauce and salsa and then an actual tomato so it's the same thing I am avocado I didn't like avocados when I was young and then eventually I did so just giving them little little tries maybe give them some food that they really like and then a little something that they're not so sure of so at least there's one food that they like so and then I mean, if they're over a year and they literally will try no solids at all, then I'd really talk to your pediatrician about it and see they could have a tongue tie or they could just have something wrong with their throat. I mean, they could have some kind of um, like little nodules growing in there or something that your doctor t can take care of. Because if they're eating foods and it hurts when it goes down, obviously they're not going to want to eat it. So just you can keep that in mind as well. Um. Okay, from Lisa, I'd like to move my son over to milk. He doesn't seem to like whole cow's milk. Is unsweetened almond milk okay at one? Yes, Lisa, most definitely. So I don't do dairy at all with my kids. Um, I've always had intolerances, although I didn't realize that until I was older and started actually, like I said, I had nutritional problems when I was young and didn't realize what they were until I actually started studying nutrition. Um, but yes, so I never gave my kids whole milk at all so the reason they say whole cow's milk so if you're stopping nursing or stopping formula which has a lot of healthy fats in it and then you move them over to milk they need the healthy fat too so that's why they're saying don't give them one percent don't give them two percent give them whole milk well i still feel that a lot of kids have issues digesting milk so i would avoid it all together i gave my kids i would mix unsweetened almond milk and then also unsweetened coconut. As long as you're switch sticking with the unsweetened thing, then that's perfect. Just obviously stay away from stuff that's with, with sugar in it. Because um, kids really don't need added sugar. But, I mean, there's so many other, there's rice milk and all that kind of stuff too. But I really, I just did basically 50-50 unsweetened almond milk and unsweetened coconut milk. So feel totally fine with that. Um, you'll want to give them, just make sure they're getting other healthy fat, fats elsewhere too, which I'm sure that your son is, which is great. Um, so, yeah, you're doing great. And then from Alexandra, want to maybe choke on chunks of food. Isn't that why it's best to start with purees? Well, so this was always my thought too. I was afraid that, like, I, I kind of heard about the baby led weaning thing. I want to say it was super popular back when my son was little. Or maybe just come, kind of coming into the forefront of it. But the, so that's why, like, when I, I would try the puree things, I mean, I was, like, totally into it. I got everything to make my own pouches and make my own jars and 
And like I said, he didn't like it. So that kind of all went out the window. But um, I realized over time through my kids, through my studies and all that kind of stuff, that babies actually, you'll notice that if you give them tiny chunks of food, that they'll gum it. So literally, you know, and you'll see them trying to chew. Um, as long as it's super soft, and they can swallow it, you know, um, I wouldn't give them like a whole grape, for example, you know, because they can choke on it and it'll get stuck in their airway. But something that's very small and soft is is great. I mean, even some purees aren't entirely pureed. I mean, they still have tiny little chunks. So that's, you know, that just lets you be aware that it's okay. Um, if you feel more comfortable doing the puree things, by all means, that's fine. But you, kids, kids do a lot more than we think that they can, and even a baby. Um, you can also do another thing. I can't remember the name of the product, but it's like almost like a little handle, and then there's a little net that's on it. And so when my son, I don't know, was maybe like seven or eight months, I would put strawberries and watermelon in there because it was summertime. And he loved them. And he would just chew on the net, and it kind of smashes the food. So little chunks come through, so it kind of gets them used to the chunk thing. But you don't have to worry about them actually, like, choking on a whole thing. So that's another option, too. So any other questions, ladies or men? <laughs> it's probably mostly ladies out there. But if there are any guys out there, I'm happy to answer your questions, too. If not, um, okay, how much citrus is okay? Citrus, again, is one of the things that you should be really, like, really weary of. Personally, I was allergic to citrus when I was young. I would always get really bad diaper rash, and my son also. Um, he still can only have, like, one little of those mini mandarin oranges a day. Um, if he has more, he starts to get a pretty bad rash. So kind of watch your kid. Um, I would say just really start with just a little bit because it is very acidic. Some kids can be allergic to it. Some kids are totally fine. My daughter can eat a lot more and she's fine. Although still, I would say if I give her three of the oranges a day, then she starts, you know, <laughs> she starts to not feel well and say her stomach hurts. So just start with a little bit. I mean, I, like measurement wise, it's hard to say. I would say like a couple bites here or there is totally fine. And just watch them like any new food. I mean, some kids are allergic to strawberries, some kids are allergic to blueberries, stuff that you wouldn't think would necessarily do any harm at all. So just keep that in mind and go from there. All right, let's see. If there are foods they could be allergic to before the age of one, why would we introduce those foods at all? At a later time, wouldn't they remain potentially harmful, or is it clear indication from our bodies that those foods aren't good for us? It kind of depends. So a lot of parents, I would say, if you're allergic to nuts yourself, like say you're allergic to peanuts, then it's more likely that your child will also be allergic to peanuts, and so you'll probably want to avoid them at least a little bit, or be very cautious when giving them to. So usually, in regards to allergic reactions and stuff, the first time you introduce a food, your child's not going to have an allergic reaction. This isn't always the case, but a lot of times it is because your body, the, the body produces antibodies against them, saying, okay, these are bad for you. So then the next time that you have that food or ingest the food, your body fights it off, and that's where you get the reaction from. So it's good to, I mean, it depends on the food. So for me, again, I'm allergic to dairy and gluten. Um, so I don't eat them at all. And then I was, I didn't have them when I was nursing. And so, I, I mean, I, I just feel that there's a lot of other foods that are healthier options out there that I could give my kids. Granted, I did try a little bit of dairy and a little bit of um, wheat type products just to kind of see my kids' reactions and they didn't react well which is why I stopped giving them to them. Um, but, I mean, stuff like nut butters, it's just a lot of people, it, it's hard when your kid has allergies. It's hard when they go to birthday parties. It's hard when they go to school. It's hard when they're around their friends. They see other kids eating stuff. I mean, it's hard to always be so cautious. So it's good to know either way if your kid has an allergic reaction or not. 
And then if it's a food that you're really into, like for me, I mean, since I don't eat meats myself, that nut butters is a great way, or nuts in general is a great way for me to get healthy fats, fiber, and protein in my diet. If my kids didn't eat nuts, that would be really, really tough. So it was really important for me to make sure that they were okay having them. Like my mom has a really severe tree nut allergy. Um, she's okay with peanuts, but all of their tree nuts, I mean, she basically will die if she eats them. So that could have been something that my kids were really allergic to just because my mom was. Thank God they weren't. Um, but again, that's one of the reasons why it, it, just giving them little pieces here and there and, and figuring it out, just watching very closely. So let's go to the next one. Breastfeeding. Okay, so if my doctor suggests that I avoid certain foods while breastfeeding, should I avoid feeding baby those things like dairy products, et cetera, for a certain period of time until they're older? Again, this is basically the th same thing I was talking about. Um, yes, so I mean, a lot of times if you're avoiding a food while you're breastfeeding, it's because your baby had some kind of allergy or intolerance to that food. Again, especially dairy and wheat are some of the biggest ones. Tomatoes for me, I couldn't eat tomatoes when I was pregnant because, or when I was nursing my son because he would get really bad diaper rash. Um, and he still can't have tomatoes, for example. So obviously it was showing me ahead of time, okay, uh, his little body can't tolerate tomatoes and it still can't today. So that just kind of gives you um, an idea of why, you know, why if it's affecting you when you're breastfeeding, it most likely will affect them after the fact too. Um, you can try, I would say wait until they're more like nine or 10 months maybe uh, for trying some of those foods that you weren't having while you were nursing and just get them used to other foods first. And again, when you do introduce those foods, give it to them like one day, wait two days, give it to them again, wait two days, give it to them again, see their reaction, maybe give it to them the next day, you know, just kind of spread it out to begin with, and then you can start doing it closer and closer together and see how they feel. So, let me see. Okay, so I see something about fruit names and puree. Okay, so you can always watch this video back um, if you didn't see the whole thing, if you want to hear everything I was talking about. Um, but basically, let me just give you a quick rundown and say that I suggest um, doing vegetables first before we do fruits. If you do want to start with fruits, I would say the best fruits would be pears, like really soft, you know, really soft pears apples, bananas, and then you could go into some like melons, you know, those are also good fruits to start or to kind of like lead your way into. Um, vegetables are the best because it's harder for someone to eat vegetables as opposed to fruit because vegetables are more bitter. You know, most people love, <laughs> love fruit anyway because it is sweet. And so I would say start, start off with a vegetable first. And then fiber and protein, are they fine for a seven-month-old baby? It depends. So I would not give my little baby um, protein powder, for example, or like a fiber bar or something like that because their systems are so delicate and their digestive systems are just working. I mean, there is – obviously, there's protein and all that kind of stuff in your mouth or in suppl or if you're supplementing and doing the formula. Um, but – they should be getting enough from there that when you're starting off at seven months, it's just the process of starting off. It's not actually the food that they're ingesting or that they're getting. So I hope that that helps you. And if there are not any more questions, then I will just do a quick goodbye. Um, hold on one sec. Um, let's see if I covered everything. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, if you have anything else that you want to know about baby's first foods, you can always comment here and let me know, and then I'll, I can check back at another time um, because we are going to save this broadcast. So if you liked it, please, again, give me a thumbs up. Um, tell your friends about it. You can share the link once it's actually posted. 
Um, you can watch it back. It'll be on Tranquilo Matt's YouTube. I'm sure I'll share it on mine as well. And then if you have any more questions for me personally or you were a family member want to work with me, and you can email me at jessicahealthyfitfabmoms.com or you can contact me via my website or social media handle at Healthy Fit Fab Moms. You know, I'm around. So thanks again for giving me your guys' time. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this insightful and you feel more confident moving into this new phase of solids with your little. It, act it really is a fun time. I know it can be daunting, but you guys will do good. Um, so, and d again, don't forget to tag your friends in the comments and if you think that they would benefit from them. So, I appreciate you guys and thanks again. And thanks again for Tranquilo Matt for letting me steal your space. This was awesome. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So, until next time, mamas, take care.